Hello, I'm Mike Contos, the CardioSource Editor-in-Chief for the Cardiac Biomarkers Community. As part of our Ask the Experts section, we will be discussing a common diagnostic dilemma faced in the evaluation of chest pain patients, the presence of troponin elevations in patients with significant renal disease, which, depending on the type of assay and the diagnostic value used, may be detectable in more than 70% of end-stage renal disease patients. Today, we have Dr. Chris DeFilippi from the University of Maryland here. Dr. DeFilippi is an Associate Professor of Medicine, Division of Cardiology, who has published a number of studies involving renal failure and troponins. Chris, it's commonly assumed that these elevations are benign and result from decreased renal excretion. Is this true? And if not, where do these elevations come from? Well, I should back up with the initial development and utilization of the cardiac troponin assays in the 1990s. Patients with end-stage renal disease were the prototype of uh, finding elevations in the absence of symptoms and the recognition that troponin could be elevated in patients with chronic diseases. The elevation is, in fact, due to cardiac injury, but not of an acute coronary syndrome. Well, are these elevations benign, or, or are they clinically significant, and what's their prognostic implications? In fact, they're not benign at all. Patients with end-stage renal disease have a high mortality of approximately 20% a year, which almost 50% can be accounted for by cardiovascular disease. And uh, elevation in an asymptomatic end-stage renal disease patient is often a harbinger of cardiovascular death and all-cause mortality. Since these elevations are fairly frequent in patients with renal failure and end-stage renal disease, how should we diagnose myocardial infarction? So myocardial infarction can be diagnosed still based on the universal guidelines that have been published in 2007 with the recognition that many patients with end-stage renal disease, and for that matter, patients with chronic kidney disease not yet require renal replacement therapy, will have a baseline elevation of a cardiac troponin. One needs to look at the change. In fact, one needs to look at the signs and symptoms and other findings that may be consistent with an acute coronary syndrome. But given that many patients may present atypically, there may not be classic electrocardiographic findings, a single elevated level should not be considered diagnostic of acute coronary syndrome, but rather we should look at a change. With the recent publication a couple of weeks ago from the European Society of Cardiology Biomarker Working Group, they suggested that we look at a delta and that that delta be related to the coefficient of variation of the assay at the level being looked at. And what does that mean? Well, for most common uh, elevations that are moderate to somewhat high, the coefficient of variation for the analytical coefficient of variation may be on the order of 5 to 7 percent. And we want to be within about three standard deviations of that. So that would be a change of about 20 percent. However, at very low levels near the level of imprecision of the assay where the coefficient of variation might be even 20 percent, we may want to look at changes more, such as 50 percent as being significant for uh, showing an elevation that would be consistent with an acute coronary syndrome. There are a number of new novel troponin assays that are 10 to 100 fold more sensitive than current troponin assays. Uh, how do these function in patients with renal failure? You know, in some ways, the, the renal failure patients being the prototype of an elevation with the more conventional assays, um, it's not going to be surprising that uh, elevated troponins are going to be almost universal or ubiquitous in patients with end-stage renal disease, and, and the vast majority of patients with chronic kidney disease will likely have elevated values of high-sensitive troponin T or high-sensitive uh, troponin I. And so we'll really have to rely, if we think it's an acute coronary syndrome presentation, upon change in that value. That, you know, no prospective study has been done yet to look at that to see whether, in fact, that's going to be the best uh, approach to diagnosing acute coronary syndromes in patients with chronic uh, elevated levels and chronic kidney disease. Chris, thank you again for being here. And thank you all for being here at CardioSource. Thank you.